Hey, that's great. Billy Diamond, ladies and gentlemen, one of America's hottest comedians. You got it in there. What are you gonna do with it? Oh, to the people. That must do wonders for the digestion. <laughs> we'll be right back with Billy Diamond and our special guest star Shirley McCoy. <laughs> Ciao, Bernie. Crazy? No, hungry. Keep driving. Keep your eyes on the road. You keep my eyes on it when you got a gun in my hand. That's right. It's a real gun with real bullets. And I bet you bleed real blood, too. So what do you want? I was in the audience, Billy. I saw you do the gorilla banana peel routine. That was my routine. You stole it from me. Yeah, that's it. Look for your gun, Billy. Look for it in my hand. <laughs> Hey, you're wacko, Dave. Yeah. And you're dead if you try that again. Look, man, my wife is pregnant. I'm broke. I'm desperate. I've got nothing to lose. So what do we do now? Drive to your house. And you give me the money to pay for that hunk of my act you just stole. I was just trying it out. You at stole it! You did it on TV! I can't use it now. i got to work up a whole new routine. Stop it! Stop it, man! I will shoot you! Man. Hey, ah, oh, there you are. Hey, Billy! Come on. Billy! Ah. Mr. Diamond! Hey! Hey, Billy, come on. Let's go. We're late. Late? Do I know you? Oh, jeez. I forgot you just got here, right? I'm Max, your new agent. Oh, you must be that new guy at the Morris office. Uh, no, I'm from here. Here, but where? Come on, the stage is up this way. The stage? What is this place? If you're not from the Morris office, you're not my agent. They, they represent me all over the world. Yeah, but only all over the world, not here, OK? Now, look, you're going to need your own material, probably the schizo sketch. What? You're telling me I'm dead? Hey, it's no big deal. Everybody around here is. I don't know why people are so surprised. Look, don't worry about it. It happens to everybody, OK? Now, look, the band's starting to tune up. You got to get out there and audition. Audition? Hey, I don't do auditions. I'm America's hottest comic. I don't audition. Well, you better do this one. There's a lot riding on it. Like what? Like where you spend eternity. <laughs> OK, there it is. Now, now, get out there and get those laughs, Billy. Get them any way you can. Knock them down! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, devil are angels, whoever you are. I uh, hope you checked your wings and pitchforks at the door. There'll be no flying or pitchfork throwing during the performance. Thank you very much. I wish I knew a little more heaven and hell jokes. It's always good to know a little local humor. Is the uh, big guy out there? I uh, guess not. I, I can just see him now uh, creating another new universe. I've probably got it down pat by now. But seriously, folks, Hey, the Duke out there? He, he isn't out there, is he? Oh. 
Hey, listen, buddy. If there's anything that I do that you think is remotely funny, you'll let me know, right? I mean, uh, you'll send me a telegram or something, huh? Yeah. yeah I, I know what this is. This is a, uh, a charity performance for the deaf, dumb, and blind. Am I right? Uh, yeah, I was a transsexual one time, but I got over it. Uh, uh, I went to Transsexuals Anonymous. Uh, I went to a meeting and two people showed up of the opposite sex, and I was both of them. Hey, look, listen. Kill the symbols already, will you? Kill them. <laughs> what do you think this is? The, the Catskills in the 50s, huh? So, uh, uh, what do you want? Uh, more traditional stuff, uh, ethnic humor? What is it? Tell us about the time you put the girl in the hospital. <laughs> Terrific. A heckler, and just when things were going so swell. Come on, tell us about the time you put the girl in the hospital. Hey, look, this is a show, you know, entertainment. You don't want to hear about me beating up a hooker. <laughs> you like sick jokes, huh? I give you a sick joke over these two beautiful Siamese twins. Hey, they go into the polo lounge, you see, and this agent with a wooden leg, he, he hobbles over to him, right? <laughs> you flew the polo lounge? Why did you leave the girl in the room? Why didn't you call an ambulance? I have my reputation to think about. Look, I'm not proud of it. Uh, I got a bad temper, especially when I'm high. Which is more often than not. Well, let's face it, I'm a drunk. But what happened to the girl? Nothing. The truth. I broke her jaw in three places. She had to have surgery. who tried to shoot you? The one who caused the accident? Is he out here somewhere? Tell us about him. What's to tell you? He's a struggling young comic. Worse, he was a married struggling young comic. How did you meet him? One of the comedy clubs. He came up to me and asked me for some advice, so I gave it to him. He showed me his act, and I gave him a few pointers, and there was a... There were a couple of bits in there that I borrowed. Borrowed? I stole, I, uh, I stole, I stole his whole act! You mean you didn't pay him anything for it? No! Why should I? Hey, it's his word against mine. He was too shy. He had never performed his act in a club before. No! No, he was, uh... He was what you call uh, easy pickings. <laughs> and that was funny. Wait till they hear how your mother died. No! My mother wasn't exactly wonderful. She was always complaining about everything. So I kicked her out of the house and uh, she went back to live in Philly. It was pretty cold and 
Philly that winter. Mom got sick. Very sick. Mom died. Natural causes. <laughs> Natural? All right, hypothermia, the doctor called it. She froze to death. Are you satisfied? killed me. I think I'm gonna be sick. Oh, so what? They loved your act. If it wasn't my act they loved, it was me. I don't love me. I don't even like me. I'm a lousy person. Whatever. Okay, look, from now on, you're gonna be a busy person. I got your book solid. Where? Well, here, three shows a night, seven nights a week. Doing what? What you just did. Your life story, word for word. I, I, ne <laughs> I never heard such laughs in this room. You mean each night I got to go out there and tell about all the rotten things I'd done in my life again and again, over and over, forever? Hey, forever's a long time, kid. But I got you penciled in for two eons. Then we'll see, OK? Uh, listen, I got some of the business to take care of. I'll catch up with you later, OK? Listen, you got a permanent room in the back uh, with a bunk, a little refrigerator, washroom, toilet, shower, whatever else you need. You know, the laundry's on the house, by the way. Listen, I'll tell you what. I'll stop by tomorrow. We'll have some lunch, OK? Order some food up to the room. Just now, six, six, six. They'll get you anything you want. Anything, within reason. <laughs> hey, kid, congratulations. You're going to be a star. Let's hear it for him, ladies and gentlemen. A big hand for Billy Diamond. A madcap kind of guy who'll make you laugh until it hurts. Late of Hollywood in Las Vegas, now leaving him rolling in the aisles of the Twilight Zone. There is a place where everything that's ever been lost can be found again. A place where lost hopes, lost dreams, lost chances wait for someone to reclaim them. But before you can find them, first you must become lost in the Twilight Zone. I don't know what your name is here. I'm telling you, she doesn't work. I've used a bicycle pump, a hair dryer, even my mouth. Please. Let's not get graphic. I mean, how would you like waking up next to something that looks like a jellyfish with You've rouge? you got a great deal. I didn't even charge you for the bikini. Well, can you tell her I can find I think it? this gentleman was in front of you. Besides which... Look, I'm not here to buy anything. All I want to do is find the Lost and Found Emporium. I was told it was around here. It's here. Sometimes. Sometimes? What the hell is that supposed to mean? It means sometimes it's here and sometimes it's not. Go back and look for yourself. Second door in the rear of the shop. Have you tried pulling out the little tab? Oh, my God, he ripped her. Look, I want a new dolly or my money back.
Hello? Is anybody here? Hey, you got a customer here. Hey, let's have a little service here. I wonder if you can help me. This, this is the lost and found Emporium, isn't it? Is that Florida out there? Yes, of course, Fort Lauderdale, where else? I was told this is an unusual shop where one might find something lost. Yeah, yeah I was told the same thing. Well, perhaps you can tell me, Mr. Mr. Wong. David Wong. And I don't work here. I'm a customer, too. Oh, I am sorry. Do you know where I might find the proprietor? If I did, do you think I'd be roaming around this place by myself? No. No, no I suppose not. Do you think perhaps he's out to lunch? Oh, there's a thought. Out for a little eye of newt on whole wheat? How about a bit of bat brains tempura, huh? Hey, yo. Hey, you got some customers here. Anybody home? It, it, it may seem silly, but I'm not looking for a thing exactly. Well, that is not a solid object. I don't suppose you could tell me where I might find some lost time? Lady, I can care less. You see, you... I always wanted to be an artist, a sculptor. Well, I didn't get started until I was in my 40s. But several of my things sold at art fairs. I even got quite a few exhibited, but, well, it, it was so hard to, to keep going. I didn't have the discipline, or the patience, and I just sort of fell away from it and never went back. I, oh, I know it sounds small, but it's the only thing I've accomplished. All I want is the time I lost while well, my skills were still sharp. You know how long it took me to find this place? Well, at first, all I heard were rumors. I visited psychics, went to occult societies, met 12 people, each claiming to be the current incarnation of Jesus Christ. Oh, and one former great high priest of Lemuria. Lady, we're talking some deeply twisted individuals here. Three years, piecing together clue after clue, Finally coming oh, up with an address. Just a moment, please. Just oh, one moment. And now that I'm here, there's no one running this stupid place. Now, just what am I supposed to... Is something wrong? Behind you. What's behind me? Can't you see it? See what? Stroke mice until calm for a period not less than five minutes. Follow directions precisely. Satisfaction guaranteed. No duplications. No exchanges. Do you suppose this might be my 
My second chance. Stroke wise until calm. Yes. Come on. Oh, no, no, it, it makes sense. Look, I followed the same trail as you did to this place. Oh, you know, spiritualist books on the occult. I even seem to recall one of them saying that a discarnate quality or idea had to take some physical form before a person could claim it. Poor little things. So frantic, so impatient. Like me. Oh, please let me try. Please. Be my guest. Sweetheart. Come here, sweetheart. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, please. No, don't go. Please. Oh, please. Where are you? Oh, no. No, no, not again. Yeah, well, those are the breaks. <laughs> Excuse me. Can you please tell me just where I am? You don't know? It's the oddest thing. I was leaving my doctor's office. The elevator was slow, so I took the stairwell instead. And as I opened the door to the first floor ground level... Oh, that figures. Here I spend three years searching for this place, and you go and stumble onto it. I found myself here. I've been wandering around for half an hour. I've seen the strangest things. What is this place? Well, maybe you needed to find this place just now. Tell me something, Pops. You lose anything valuable? Lost hope? Lost dreams? Lost love? I, I don't know what you mean. I... I suppose I, I have lost something. Down through the years. Some way, I, I still can't quite understand. I seem to have lost the respect of my children. When they're little, you know, they put all their trust in you. And you raise them as best you know how, never letting on that you don't have all the answers. You're frightened that you might do wrong by them without meaning to. And one day, you realize somehow you failed them. Betrayed that trust they put in you long ago. You don't know how or why. Come on. If I hear one more sob story, I'm going to puke. So I might as well show you your damn respect. Stare into mirror for not less than five and a half minutes. Follow directions precisely. Satisfaction guaranteed. No duplications, no exchanges. Never saw me like that. Never. Do you think I could put it back together somehow?
don't believe you. Neither do I. Now, if you don't mind... What's wrong with you? Don't you have any feelings for him? For the old woman? Don't you think I know what I am? I came in here looking for my compassion. I started losing it years ago. Went around for student congress in college and had my posters covered up with swastikas and KKK symbols. When I'd go out with a Caucasian woman and people would stare at us, at me, as though I was polluting the gene pool by just having coffee with her. But I think... I think I lost the last of my compassion after reading about Vincent Chin. You ever hear of Vincent Chin? No, but... He was only 27 years old. He lived in Detroit. He was beaten to death by two Caucasian men who mistook him for Japanese and blamed him for the decline of the American auto industry. The judge gave him probation. Fined them $3,000. The Justice Department, they retried him. Retried him on violating Chin's civil rights. One was found guilty and sentenced to 25 years in prison. But the other, the other was acquitted, even though he'd held Chin down while the other clubbed him. Well, at least they were retried. That's something. Yeah, 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 that's what I kept trying to tell myself. But by then it was a bit late for me. Do you think I like being this way? The girl I'd lived with for five years left me because of what I'd become. Oh, oh I, I, I'd be delighted. I'd be delighted if I could find some compassion. I only knew her in this crazy place it was. I can find it for you. What? The Globe of Light. The one you followed? Well, I could see it, too. You see, I think it's our own light that we can't see. We can find things others have lost, but not ourselves. Well, it makes sense. As much sense as anything else does in here. Good. Then I've got a proposition for you. I'll find your compassion for you. And in exchange, you find me what I lost. Deal? Well, what is it you lost? You don't need to know that. Well, suppose I don't get it until you tell me. I won't tell you. And you won't get what you want. We're quite a pair, aren't we? Two fine specimens. All right. All right, let's go. So. How long have you had this assertiveness problem anyway? What? You would know irony for the camera and bitch on the knee, would you? Vapors evaporate quickly. Inhale for five to ten seconds. Satisfaction guaranteed, etc., etc. Spot of light. Please do follow me. <laughs> One of these brown eyes contains your lost compassion. Guess which one? Hey, we had a deal. You were gonna find it for me. I did. It's right here. <laughs> Just what did I get back for you anyway? My sense of humor. A bad marriage, bad divorce. It can do that. Makes you sullen, self-righteous. One day I woke up and discovered I'd forgotten how to laugh at myself. At anything, for that matter. Damn it! This isn't fair. Now, now, what if I choose the wrong one? What if it contains something bad? 
Maybe now you know how those poor people you mistreated felt. Hey, they could all be good. Oh, they could be mostly bad. <laughs> you got the guts, brown eyes. You can open them all. Brown eyes, feel like you've regained anything? Well, there was this picnic my family went on when I was little. Well, I knew I had a good time, one of the few I had as a kid, but, but I could never remember the details. Till now. Oh. Gee, I wonder if there's a broom around here. I really should clean this up before someone steps on this. Integrity. What? got your integrity back. Can't you feel it? Yeah, I, I guess I did lose that, too, somewhere down the line. Or else I couldn't have been so cruel to those other people, even without compassion. After all, they did trust me to, to find their lost... Wait a minute. If one of those held my integrity and the other my, my memories of the picnic... Oh, you found me out. All three of them were yours. I could tell by the light. And the test tube holds my compassion. Oh, where is it? Where is it? It's got to be here. It's got to be. Oh, no. 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 Maybe this was no accident. Oh, come on. It could have happened to anybody. I'm sorry, brown eyes. If I had known, I would have given it to you right off the bat. I don't mean that probably deserved it. I mean, my, my finding this place, when it seems to be without a manager, in some way I can't quite explain. I feel like, like this place is mine now, that I owe it something. Maybe I'll stick around for a while. Think maybe you could use some help? Are you serious? Well, the person I used to be didn't make much of a life for me to go back to. Like you, I guess. This place seems right for me. For us. Well, your management now. Gotta look your best, you know. And I've got news for you, brown eyes. You've got your compassion back. I'm sure of it. But you said it was in the test tube I broke. Well, it was. As a separate quality. Only I think your integrity comes with a little compassion as a package deal, forces it on you. Do you really think so? You could try it out. On them. I lost one chance to help them, didn't I? You got it, brown eyes. And what can be lost can be found again, can't it? You won't find it in the yellow pages or advertised in the local paper. Its reputation is spread purely by word of mouth from one satisfied customer to another. But if, like most of us, you've lost something in your time, look for this door. And if you don't find it at first, don't lose hope. Because even that can be found again in the Twilight Zone. Davidson's pool. They finished the heavy work on that a week ago. Don't tell me. The Harpers are making another room addition. Can't be. Patty Harper would have been bragging about it for weeks. No, whatever it is, I hate it. What time is it?
Oh, God. 1137. Uh-uh. Oh, God. Oh, boy. That's great. Wait a minute. Hold the heart attacks. It's only a little after 7. This thing must finally be losing it. Well, another average day begins in the right household. Mm. 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 <laughs> Michael, did you hear that? No. It sounded like the front door. It wasn't. Come on. Why are they bringing things into our house? Michael, where is everybody? Hasn't anybody seen this? Hasn't anybody called the police? Turners are on vacation. Yes, but, but we can use her telephone. Cliff Turner would never leave his door unlocked like that. The phone's in the family room. What's going on? Excuse me. Please don't move. We need help. 
Would you mind telling me who you are and what you're doing here? Oh, thank God we found you, or, or that uh, you found us. Whatever. You have got to tell us what's going on. Well, do you people live near here? Uh, about seven blocks from here on Collins Avenue. Uh, well, is there some place closer you'd be more comfortable? Uh, well, there's my office. Uh... What is all this? What the hell is going on? You're, well, some place you're not supposed to be. And where the devil is that? Well, it's not so much where, really, as when. We are now in the minute 1137 AM, April 27, 1900. Wait, 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 what do you mean, in 1137? We're talking about time, Mr. Wright. And somehow, you and your wife have uh, stepped backstage in time. While all your friends, neighbors are experiencing the minute 9.33, you two somehow have skipped over a few hours and landed here in the minute 11.37. I'm not following this at all. Let me see if I can explain. Now, think of time as an infinite series of boxcars, all linked together, like this. Now, each boxcar represents one minute, and people like yourselves move from boxcar to boxcar as time moves forward. Now, each boxcar is totally empty, like that white void you stepped into in the alley back there. And it's up to me and my crew to build something into that boxcar. Now, the boxcar we're standing in right now is 1137. Meanwhile, everybody else, all your friends, are experiencing the minute 934. And in one minute, they'll be in 935, then 936, until eventually they reach 1137. They'll spend their minute here, and then move on to 1138, 1139, and on and on. Understand? So you're saying that each minute of time is a different place? That's right. Why? Why what? Why does time work like this? Because that's the way it works. You're saying that the house that we woke up in this morning is not the same house that we went to sleep in last night? No, it's not the exact same house, but made to look identical to the other house. And if I and my crew do our jobs well, you'll never know the difference. And you do this for every minute? You build everything? Makes you want to stop taking your minutes for granted, doesn't it? How do you do all that? Well, I've got quite a few workers, and we work quite a ways in advance. Here. Here, take my hand. Absolutely not. Come on! Honey, I don't feel good about this. Next Christmas Day, 5.06 a.m., about eight months from now. As you can see, we're just beginning work. But by December 25th, people will spend their minute here, and it will look exactly as they expect. So that white void that we ran into back in that alley, that was some area that you hadn't finished yet? Oh, no, no. That section of the alley won't even be used during that minute. No one will walk down it or even see it. So we didn't bother to finish it. OK, can we get out of here? I'm, I'm feeling a little woozy. Oh, sure. And here we are, back at 11.37, April 27th. More dust up there. I've been meaning to get to that. <laughs> Do you ever make mistakes? Have you ever gone to where you swore you left your car keys or your tie tack or your earrings and they weren't there? 
You look everywhere. And then you look again, and they're right back where you thought they were in the first place. Yeah. Hmm. Little things like that. Nothing major, thank heavens. Not yet, anyways. It's all very precariously balanced. One big mess up could unravel the whole system. Wait till I tell Gary about this. Oh, he'll just flip out. <laughs> Gary Bachman's a friend of ours from college. He, he writes for Omni, Science Digest, magazines like that. No, oh, I'm afraid you can't tell your friend. Well, I'm not certain we'd know how to explain all this, but you can't expect us not to try. Uh, I mean, the way time works is uh, one of the supreme mysteries of the universe. It's supposed to be a mystery. And the balance of things demands that we make certain it remains one. How? Uh, I mean, how are you going to keep us from... By keeping you here, with us. No. Oh, you're not the first ones to have slipped behind the scenes like this. It happens every once in a while. I'm afraid you simply cannot be allowed to return. The repercussions of such a move could prove cataclysmic. And to be honest, I'm not certain you'd even be able to return. Well, y you could at least let us try. Sorry. There's simply no choice. Michael? Come on. Hey! Wait! Come back! Almost 11.37. Come on. How do you know it's safe? Well, we haven't seen or heard anybody in over a half an hour. Now, I figure they can't risk being caught here when actual time does arrive, so they just had to leave us and hope for the best. What's going to happen when actual time does arrive? Well, we'll know that in 45 seconds. What if 11.37 comes and goes and everybody else goes with it and we stay here? I don't know. I'm just here. This is my first time. Mr. Wright. Mrs. Wright, you must come with me. Now. No. Actual time is almost here. 20 seconds. Go. Go. You've got to go. Now. What's that noise? It's the sound of actual time approaching. 10 seconds. Excuse me. I'm terribly sorry. I've got like four more feet and then I'm clear of your That magazine's right back here. Hey, wait. Think you're gonna stick? I hope so, honey. Believe me, nobody would like to stick in actual time more than me. 20, 19, 18. What if we don't? 17. You're starting again. We'll know in 10 seconds. Eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. We did it! <laughs> We're back! Oh, oh. Let's go home. Yeah. Gary Bachman is never going to believe this. Never. Michael, look. Time, a handy fiction to explain why everything doesn't happen all at once. Or maybe we're the fiction, moving minute by minute, 
through the Twilight Zone. Pendleton, you're early. I wanted to make sure I found the house all right. I'll be glad to wait. No, that's all right. Come in. I'm a bit overeager, I guess. My first day at work. You see, I've always wanted to... You lower your voice just a little, Miss Pendleton. We don't want to disturb my, uh, my employers. Oh, I'm sorry. And please call me Ellie. As I was saying... I've always wanted to work in a library. This is a private library, Miss Pendleton. The books here are not for reading by you, by me, by anyone. The owners, uh, my employers, are very strict about that. Oh, well, that's all right. I just like being around books. They kind of inspire me. You see, I want to be a... a writer, yes, I remember. Well, if you like being around books, Miss Pendleton, this is just the place for you. You see, Miss Pendleton, we've gotten a little crowded here. Which is why we're switching over from books to something far more practical. Holograms. Holograms, of course. You know, I've never had an assistant before. But with a changeover of this magnitude, I simply couldn't handle it myself. I'm afraid my employers don't know about you. Oh, they're very reluctant to allow any outsiders here. But I had to have some help. And so your discretion is of the utmost importance, Miss Pendleton. Do you understand? Uh, no, not really. Do you see that room there? That's where the books will be transformed. We're all set up and ready to begin. And now that you're here, begin we shall. Every morning, I'll give you a list of books to locate. Uh, you'll bring them to me in that room, in that cart. Now, where is it? Here it is. Once this work has been completed, I won't have to move more than ten feet in any direction. What's in these books? Nothing that need concern you. They've got people's names on them and birth dates? It's our method of cataloging, that's all. Gloria, this is definitely not the Dewey Decimal System here. This room can't possibly be in the house I came in, can it? Well, if you're going to split hairs, no, but... Uh... These books hold lives, don't they? Now that you mention it, yes, they do. Is a book here for everybody who was ever born? Everybody that's alive. Each is an up-to-the-minute record, changing with every moment. And when someone dies? His or her book is immediately removed at the request of my employer. They use it to determine that person's final chapter, I suppose you might say. So you see, Ellie... Working here is more than a job. It's an honor.
giving in to temptation, she finds the book of her life, opens it, and reads. Ellie, did you drop something? No. No, everything's all right, Gloria. I just bumped the card on one of the shelves, that's all. Do try to be careful, dear. I'll try. Interesting? That's all you're going to say? Your new job is interesting? It's a library. What do you want me to say? That it's uh, enormously exciting. Unbelievably stimulating. You got the enormous and the unbelievable part right. Mom called. Want to know how you were doing on your book? I told her great. Was I lying? Unfortunately, yes. But it's only because I've been so worried about finding a job. I hope. I'll find out after dinner when I sit down to write. Well, I have to get to work. I thought we were going to go out to eat together to celebrate my new job. I'm working double shift. Diane's taking her kids skiing. Listen, I will pick you up tomorrow after work, and we'll go celebrate then, okay? Anything you say, Miss Pushover. Five gallons of ice water wouldn't fix. <laughs> Mr. Kelleher! What? It's me, Ellen Pendleton, from next door. Yes, yeah, so? I'd like to remind you that right on the other side of the world's cheapest dry wall from you is me. Yes, yeah, so? Dog, what's going on? Oh, hi. Hey, was it Love Pete? You remember Carla? Sure, from downstairs. Oh, not anymore. She's moving in with me. What? Yeah, we've been lonely for a very long time. So, if you got any problem with the acoustics around here, I suggest you get some cotton balls and start stuffing them. Oh, I know. I can hardly believe it either. Ain't love grin. at the church the very best kind a wedding there's nothing i like better than to see a relationship between a man and a woman consummated within the holy bonds of matrimony hmm. well have a good evening <laughs> thank you i will oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Lori, what did you do Changed everything around. Shh. She's real depressed. What are you doing in that getup? The getup. It's what I wear to work every day. What's wrong with you? With me, I almost killed myself on that chair over there. Well, everybody almost kills himself on that chair over there. So move it back to where it was. And where was that? Don't you remember? Remember what? Sorry. I'm causing trouble, aren't I? I'll leave. Just as soon as I stop crying. What's she crying about? I'm 37 years old. I have no kids, no husband, no boyfriend, nothing. That's what I'm crying about. My life is a complete and utter waste. Carla, it's not true. It is true. Thank God you can't die from loneliness. Because if you could, I'd be dead. And nobody would be at my funeral. <laughs> Good. Oh, no. You will. Good. I wish I 
Carla, <laughs> what's your last name again? You and that nice, rich Mr. DeWitt in 304 are going to be so deliriously happy together that you won't know whether it is night or day. Ellie? Did you say something, dear? I said sometimes I get so wrapped up in my work here that I don't know whether it's night or day. I know just what you mean. Sometimes I don't even know what century it is out there. Wait a minute. Oh. What do you think? Oh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> but it's 80 degrees out. When are you ever going to wear it? Next week, we're going to Vail. Oh, Ellie, ain't love grand. Laurie? Over here. Hello, Ellie. Hi, Mr. Dewey. Saw Carla. Beautiful coat. It's an ugly coat? It's a coat he has no money to pay for. I am here because I am filing for bankruptcy. Carla doesn't know yet. Bankruptcy? I'll, I will get all these papers down to federal court first thing in the morning. You're a lawyer? It all just slipped away from me. Ever since I married Carla, nothing else mattered except her. And now there is nothing else. What are the stockholders going to say? What is poor Carla going to say? I didn't know you had the brains to be a lawyer. This is really no time for wisecracks, Ellie. He's practically suicidal. Suicidal? If only I had paid more attention to business. If only I hadn't had to pay more attention to business. Oh, why couldn't I have gone into real estate or something. If it's real estate you want, Mr. DeWitt, it's real estate you're gonna get. How's it going? Oh, just fine. We're off to Long Beach. I just bought an office building there. Oh. Don't forget, Ellie, your rent's due tomorrow. <laughs> no problem. And whatever your sister's trying to pull in that uh, tea party upstairs, it's not gonna work. we have to do is sign this yeah. petition protesting that rent hike. Right. That doesn't work. We'll just sit in our apartments. We'll yeah. refuse to pay. Right. And if he tries to evict us, we'll call the news media. Yeah. We'll let this whole town know that Edwin DeWitt is nothing but a rent-gouging geek. Why didn't I just change my address to begin with? Now, this is a place where a writer can get some work done. Oh, oh my God. It it's been. my sister! Lori! She saved my son! He got caught in the undertow and was drowning when she swam out with Raft. She got him on it and she saved him. But then... She got caught, oh, and she couldn't save herself. Uh-uh. My fault. It's my fault. Don't stop, you hear me? Don't stop, whatever you do! October 12th, 1964. Ellie? What on earth? October 14th, 1964. Oh my God, it's not here. Lori's book isn't here. It's been requested. No, it's my fault she died. You've got to let me change it. Been changing the contents of the books? Just a couple. Get them all right now. All I ever wanted was a quiet place to write. I wasn't being greedy. I mean, I could have made it so the novel I'm writing wasn't only finished. It was a bestseller, but I didn't. I didn't mean any harm. Everything kept snowballing on me. Now, Lori. Oh, God, poor Lori. Leave. No, no. Ouch. Uh, no, please. Uh, what's going to happen to Lori? Well, you should have thought of that before. 
What's it really so difficult for human beings to grasp that all the lives on this planet, all of them, are intertwined? That's it. They know about it now. I mean, deep, deep. Please, just let me make a change. Oh, make one little change, Lori. Appreciate it, kiddo, but come on. It's only a little celebration dinner. Depends on what you're celebrating. Just a minute. I've got to go thank somebody. Can I uh, help you with something? Where? Where's Gloria? There's no Gloria here, just, just me and my wife, Denise. We've lived here for more than 10 years. Okay? I, uh, they got this instead. What is it? Well, that's a Schneider lens. It's perfect. <sighs> Great. <gasps> Wait a minute, is this all there is? Well, I can restore the camera. Can't do anything about those glass plates, so they're shot. I don't believe this. You go out to pick out our new bed, and you come back with a... I come back with a trunk that's perfect for the restoration of Grandma's house. It's perfect. Becky, what's this doing here? Oh, that. Yeah. Uh, look, all I really need you to do is, is fix this little door in the back. See, it doesn't stay closed. Please. Look, I told you a million times you want to learn about photography. I'll teach you. I don't want to learn photography. I just want to take some snapshots. OK. <sighs> right. I promise you'll never see this again. Promise. Becky! What is it? Well, I'm not sure. Oh, man. Look at this. What is it? It's a Kodak 100. Is that good? <laughs> It's fantastic. Oh. See, the 100 was the first camera to use roll film. It's the first really modern camera. Look at it, it's mint. Do you think the people that sold the trunk knew it was in there? No. 
Uh-uh. I don't think anybody's been in here in years. There's film in it. What? There's film in this camera. <sighs> well, it can't be any good, not after all this time. Can it? It's not impossible. The seals are good. Something tells me the hedge isn't going to get trimmed this afternoon. Nineteen thirteen. You're over seventy years old. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. These Indians are so strange. Something creepy. What are you gonna do with them? I don't know. Donate them to the museum. I could give them to the college. Alex Professor Stottle. Stottle. Yes. You go bananas over these. I'm gonna call them. Can't. Why not? It's after eleven thirty. It is not. Eleven thirty-nine, to be exact. It is. Hmm. Well, I'll call them in the morning. Good idea. Then I gotta stop by the Paxtons about Saturday's wedding. And then it's off to the high school to talk prom pictures. And then it's off to Avery's and pick up some mat board. And then I'm going to see Alex Stottle about these. Careful. Did you call him this morning? Yeah, a couple times, but the phone's busy, so I'm just going to run by. See ya. OK. okay. show you. I got some photographs of a National Geographic expedition, 1913, to the uh, Amazon River Basin. You have no photographs. There can be no photographs. Alex, do you know about this expedition? I was on it. January 1913. Yeah, the expedition to study... To study the, the Kurukai. Yes. I was a boy, just 13, apprenticed to Dr. James Levinson. 
I thought I was going on an adventure. As a matter of fact, I was lucky to escape with my life. Why? The Kurakai held many stringent spiritual beliefs. In particular, that to make an image of them, such as a drawing, was to steal their souls, their very selves. When they learned what our expedition camera could do, they turned on us and smashed our equipment. We broke camp immediately. We got as far from the Kurakai village as we could before nightfall. I'll never forget that night. When the Kurakai stalk their prey, they communicate by imitating the wind. The eeriest sound you'll ever hear. We posted guards as usual. Still, when they woke in the morning, our photographer was gone, taken by the Kurakai, even though we had taken no photographs. Yeah, but he had. He had a smaller camera hidden in his trunk. These photographs are from that camera. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is the Kurakai village. Yeah, the tall man is Dr. Levinson. There I am. What a homely brat I was 70 years ago. Where are the Kurakai? What do you mean? There's Indians in every shot. Alex, it's impossible. They're right here. How many Indians were in the photos, Daniel? I don't know. Five or six, maybe. Why? Then where are the Kurakai? Becky! Becky, are you up there? I'm home.
Included unknown lands labeled Terra Incognita and warnings like, here there be tigers. Modern maps of an enlightened world show no such disclaimers. Perhaps they should. Perhaps even today, there are realms which cannot be charted anywhere outside the Twilight Zone. Honey, I, I, I went all the way to the parts store and the, the, the darn thing still hadn't come in yet. You should have called first. Well, 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 it still wouldn't have been there, Norma. Well, maybe if we didn't have such an old car, then you wouldn't be looking for parts all the time and I wouldn't have an aching back from walking to the store up and back.
Arthur. <laughs> Not now, please. Oh, come on. But don't be like that, honey. I, I, I'll have the car fixed for you tomorrow, for sure. Yes, that's what you said yesterday, for sure. Your dinner's ready. Well, you, you're not eating? I'm not hungry. I'll go. and there's no return address. Now that's strange. Here, here, why don't you open it? What is it? I have no idea. There's a note on the bottom. Uh, Mr. Stewart will call on you at 8 p.m. I won't be here. And I'm supposed to let some stranger into my home at night? Honey, we, we've got neighbors on both sides of us and upstairs. What, 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 what could happen to you? Obviously, you couldn't care. Norma, come on! Look, 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 you, 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 you are surrounded by people! My name is Stewart. I assume you found the button unit. The what? The button unit. The box we left on your doorstep. Yeah, we found it. May I come in? Lovely home you have, Mrs. Lewis. What, are you kidding? Is your husband home? He works nights. Really? Yeah, really. May I sit? This won't take much of your time. Inside this envelope is my card and the key that unlocks the dome of the button unit. Fits into this slot in the side, like so. In this way, you can push the button. So? So, when you push the button, two things will happen. First, someone whom you do not know will die. You're kidding. It's an unexpected idea. It takes some getting used to. But let me finish. So the person who dies will be someone you don't even know. And then afterward, you will receive $200,000 tax-free.
Hi, honey. What, 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 what are you doing up so late? What, what, what's wrong? I wanted to talk to you. Well, great. Wait, wait right there. I, I, I'll get a beer. So what happened? This, this guy, did he come? He brought the key to unlock the top. So what's it all about? If we open the top and push the button, somewhere, someone who we don't know will die, and we will collect $200,000. You're kidding. <laughs> That's what he said? Well, it must be some kind of joke. Oh, he was very serious about it. Well, then, then, then it's a trick. What, 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 this guy with a company or he something? He said he couldn't tell me that. He just kept repeating over and over and over again. The person who died would be someone. You don't? No. That's disgusting. Oh, what's so disgusting about it? What's so you, you, you mean to say you think it's okay? I think it's weird. But ever since he left, I've been wondering, you know? I mean, what is this? Some kind of survey or something? To see who will and who won't push it? Well, we won't push it. Oh, come on. Thousands of people die every day all over the world, Arthur. Norma, what do you think? You think you, you, you're gonna press this button and, and this Mr. Stewart of yours is gonna pick up the phone and, and somebody's gonna go out and kill somebody and, and, then, the, and then Stewart's gonna come here and give you $200,000? I mean, I mean, think about it, Norma. It, 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 it's stupid. I don't know what I think. It's such an awful lot of money. It's murder. Oh, come on. I mean, what if it was some old Chinese peasant or something? Or someone with cancer. What if it's somebody's newborn baby? Hold this. Hold it. Hold it. There's nothing inside. <laughs> there's, 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 there's no radio, no computer, nothing. You push the button and nothing happens. N n n nobody dies. No $200,000. I'm going to throw this away. If, 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 if this Mr. Stewart comes back, you, 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 you tell him he can find his box in the city dump! I don't damn well believe it. He said he'd be back for it, Arthur. He said the units are reprogrammed and used over again. Fine. Great. While you're at it, why don't you push that damn button? Because that's why you really went out there and got it again. I am just going to fix it. No, no. Push it, Norma. You like the idea so much, push it. Kill somebody. Don't be an idiot. Go have your shower and I'll make eggs.
Well? I'm gonna push it. No, no, don't. No. I've thought about it. And I'm gonna push it. Honey, honey, please. D -d 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 don't play this stupid game. It gives me the creeps. I'm gonna push it. Good morning. I've come to take the button unit back. You did push it last night. Only one push to a customer. How did you know? Really, Mrs. Lewis? Did you think we wouldn't know? Well, did somebody... Did, did someone... Die? Yeah. Of course. There's $200,000 in the briefcase. I'll wait while you count it, if you like. Well, you must be Mr. Lewis. How do you do? So, what happens now? Why, you spend the money. And I hope you enjoy it. The button unit will be reprogrammed and offered to someone else with the same terms and conditions. Wait, someone else? Yes. I can assure you it will be offered to someone whom you don't know. <laughs> 